Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, it's Vandy. I'm back at the Card Fight Vanguard deck profiles. If you enjoyed, enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and watch shall we? Before we get this started, remember that these decks are not built for optimal ability. They're just meant to be for fun. And my version of building the deck, if you have a different way of building the deck, so be it. But you have to remember, no deck is completely useless, and they are all specialized for the player. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this started, shall we? First up today, we have our, or not first up today, but today we have Stoicaea Roroa, set 8 deck. Now, we all know that when Roro, or when all the Cry Across Epic stuff got revealed, I had a very um, certain bias towards this deck, or for this deck to be more specific, because um, I thought Roro had a spear, or not a spear, a uh, bow and arrow, and for those of you that know me, I love bow and arrows, it's one of my top three favorite weapons, followed by twin swords, of course, or a fencing rapier, slash I'll count those as one thing, and dual pistols. Sadly, when I played Deer Days and realized what Roro actually looks like, he has a sword. Does that mean I don't like him? No, because his leaves in the background made me bring him back. So yeah, um, but I have a little bit less love for this deck now that I know he does have a bow and arrow. So let's go and get this started, shall we? We can see how good Robo has with the new Red Lena stuff and, you know, just all around good support. First up, we have our starter in Bioroid Youth, Roroa. Grade zero boost by Kaishosis K base. All in Roto Point for one second draw card. Standard starter, not so much about it. It's just if you win second, you get that free draw, and that is pretty much it. Um, you can make this any. No, that is a lie, because if I remember correctly, the specific grade one requires this as your starter. So, or it, maybe it does, and I don't remember. Point is, it's a free draw, and, you know, unless the grade one requires it, then you really don't need this as your starter. You can pick any starter, but, you know, might as well run it for the flavor of just having the whole Roroa line. Plus, we never know if, um, what's his name? uh still vampire will ever be put into d i mean the chance of that happening is like one in a million but if for some reason bushy brings back still vampire you're gonna want this in your deck for even that one turn where he'll recycle your thing if you remember who still vampire is shout out to you because i remember still vampire that was my favorite dark records unit for so long uh that aside let's go ahead and move on to our tokens first we have five plant tokens cards are boost 5k power no shield um so you know they're just 5k beat sticks that kind of don't really do anything unless like you actively make it a part of your game plan we're doing up this deck can make a board in five seconds no, like, no joke, you can be as aggressive as you want with this deck, and you can make a board in five seconds as long as you have Roro on your Vanguard. I'm not even joking. I really wish I was. I have seen this deck do some stupid shit. So, it, from both me and the AI from Deer Days, the AI knows what I'm talking about. The AI has done some shit. Anyways, um, yeah, those five plant tokens do. And we have one Momoke token. Grid zero boost, 5k power, zero shield. It represents a Momoke token to not be put into your main deck. And then act rear guard once per turn, retire one or more of your other rear guards. So it can be tokens or normal units or triggers. And this unit gets plus 5k power to end up turn for each unit retire for this cost. Okay, so in premium, this does a lot fucking more because you have access to Excel gifts. But here in D, the most you're going to get out of that is probably 20. And more likely than not, it's going to be 15. Because the way you call this is you need a very specific unit in, your, in front of it. So or not in front of it, but on your board. So yeah, you know, most likely it's only going to get plus 15. That's still good, because that's a 20k booster. And then Glitter Roro, if your Vanguard is a Glitter Roro in its card name, continues Rear Guard. If you have a unit with Relina in the same card name in front of him, or in the same column as him, doesn't have to be in front of him, he can attack from the back row. So 20k swing is all around really nice, especially when you consider what Relina does, and not to mention the fact there's even a further way to boost up his power. So yeah, all around, this thing's pretty good. And if that first skill was not a once per turn, I guarantee you this deck on full tryhard can get to 100k in one turn with five hand cards i know this because i did the math and i could have done it in a game if it wasn't once per turn because i tried to do it and then i realized it was once per turn so yeah um one of this boy because you can only get one of them on the board at a time and we'll explain that why later when we get to the relinas but yeah um this thing if you see it come down and you ever play against roa kill it kill it with fire make sure it dies and then kill relina or technically kill relina first then kill this but yeah um one of and then we have our over trigger in Source Dragon DD of Blessings Bless Favor. Great to a boost, 15k shield, 5k power, over trigger, you may only want over trigger in your deck. Reveals a trigger, move that card, draw a card, choose one of your units, plus one of the turn. And if you have built it during your draft check, activate a judicial effect, which is draw a card, choose one of your units, I guess plus one crit for the turn. All your farmings get plus 10. And if you have if your damage zone is more cards equal to cards in your opponent's damage zone, choose a card from your damage zone and heal it. So essentially in everything, Bagel, you get the 1 million in draw guaranteed, but then if you got it during your turn, you get another draw, you get an extra critical on someone, plus 10 to the front row in terms of front trigger, and then a possible free heal. If this goes off, this does not guarantee you the win. Somehow this, whenever I see this over trigger, this is somehow, well, yeah, no, the games I see this over trigger the most is the games I tend to lose. I don't know why, but, um, yeah, I, it, it this thing is stupid. Like the turn you pull it, unless your opponent's going to like pull 180 on the next turn, you've pretty much crushed them because you survived their rush. 
brought yourself back down to lower damage and then just increased the offensive power by 20. So yeah, um, one of Bless Favor. Listen, you can run out Bari for the 2 million, sure, but um, everything bagel. My argument stands. Then we have our normal triggers. First up, we have three copies of Frenzied Hairs. Great to do a boost 15k shield, 4k power. Front triggers, Gutsword, Components, Vanguards are great. They're against plus 5k shield. So, you know, front triggers, it's nice to have that extra 10k to push numbers on the front row, especially because half the time when I play this deck personally, my front row consists of one plant token and either Red Lena or another plant token. So, you know, having those front triggers actually does help me a great deal. And um, the extra 5k shield does come in handy when I'm playing against Greedon. Specifically Greedon. Greedon knows what it did, but at the same time, I also beat Greedon with this deck. Not set 8, set 5, which I don't believe, because it was like anime-level bullshit. I kid, I wish I was recording that game, because it was such a good game for what it was. But yeah, um, three copies of Frenzy here. It's nice to have as the front, and then we have, followed by four copies of Serene Maiden Lina, Great Zone Boost, 5k power, 5k shield, 4k power, Draw Trings, Guard Sword, Plans Vanguard, Great Thrugus, plus 5k shield. Um, You know, increases the hand and acts as a 10k shield. All around is pretty nice. I mean, I would be a little bit more upset if, you know, I actually needed to call Rear Guard from hand, because half the time I only need to call Redlina. Considering, like I said earlier, the board, the deck makes a board as long as you have Roro on your Vanguard. So, um, yeah. I, I I mean, the draw trigger is there just to get Redlina out of the deck. So, yeah, I'm um, four up. It's just a nice shield to have. And then we have four copies of Aspiring Maiden Alana, aka the crit who never shows up when I remember she's in my deck. But when I forget, the second I forget and I've given up hope on winning, that's when she shows up. I kid you not, this card chooses when to show up until after I forget it. Anyways, grade 0 boost, 15k shield, 4k power, critical trigger, auto rear, then about a boosted. But this whole choosing is 2k for the turn. Okay, listen, anyone that's played Roro is probably going to tell you this deck, especially this one right here, is unplayable because soul. And this is the only card in the deck that soul charges. I'm telling that right now. To everyone who thinks that this deck is not stupid because it's, or, well, to think that this deck can't do some stupid shenanigans because I don't run any soul charges outside of this, I'm telling you right now, dead wrong. If there is one thing I have learned from this deck is soul is not the main resource issue. It's CB. I'm telling you, try this deck out. If you play it like me, you do some stupid shit without soul, I'm telling you right now. One soul a turn, that's all you need. Anyway, or technically two, but even then, it still works out. So, four copies of Elena. It's, it's just a good crit to have. Again, she shows up when I don't remember her. But, you know, if you need that soul for her, she'll work the soul. But the 2k doesn't really make a difference in the end. And we have four copies of her heal and fiery tone, or in my mind, Elegy Pixie, because I remember when I first put it into tabletop, I forgot to change the name, and that way in the tabletop Leonore deck, while it has the image of flowery tone, it has the name of Elegy Pixie. I will never forget that. Anyways, here's your boost 15k show, 5k power. It's a standard heal. We all know why I don't run the effect heals at this point. If you don't know why I don't run the effect heals, I'm just going to say you're new, and for those of you that don't know either way, it is because... I don't like them. They are a lot more situational, in my opinion, than they probably are. Because, like, one of them only works if a unit is attacking for the second time. Not as if your opponent has attacked for the second time or more that turn. If the same unit has attacked earlier this turn, is attacking for round two or more. I, and I hate that. Because I can think of so many games where against those restanders, those heals would have fucked me. Like, even in the cases where they would have restood. Because I had to drop a heal on the first one to actually make sure I could live to the second one. Like... And even then, like against decks like Greedom, the heals would only stall me out for one extra turn, and that turn wouldn't be enough to win. So, unless I started second if there was no tomorrow. So, like, you know, I don't like those heals. They're way too situation, and the crit one's even fucking worse. So, like, I don't like those heals. If you like them, run them. If they work for you, run them. But for me, they don't fucking do jack shit, so I'm not going to waste my time with them. I'd rather take the 15k shield base. Then we have our grade ones. First up, we have our order, and that is to the Shining Stage, a.k.a. card in here that is simply... I put it in here because I thought it'd be more useful than it was, and I've never used it since. So, like, this is the most tech option card in this deck. Replace it, whatever the fuck you want with it. I just run it because I put it in here for a reason. Even though I've yet to use it, I've done that with other decks, and it seems to work out in the end. So this one gets to stay based off of trial and error. Anyways, grade one, normal order. Play it by Soul Blasting 1 if your Vanguard's a row row. Doesn't matter if it's the grade one, two, or three. Just the one card with grade less than or equal to to your Vanguard from your drop zone, call it to rear guard. Then if you have a rear guard with a that's card, maybe call it plant token or rear guard. Okay, so you can either play this with Spiritual Body Condensation if you're going to run an order either way, because, you know, both of them are the exact same cost. Different is, this one can only be played when you're on a row row, but it can get you one more rear guard if you call it well, if you have a Red Lina, it doesn't be after you call Red Lina. 
but spiritual body condensation doesn't call that extra rear guard, just calls the one, but it gives a 5k. In my opinion, I like to the shining stage better if it's a theme more of the deck, even if I don't like the fact that I see Roho in a female outfit, <laughs> but whatever. Um, I'll run the order's fine. If you don't want to run this, run Soul Chargers, I guess, but uh, yeah, fuck it. I put this in here for a reason. I'm going to live with that decision. Two of this order. It will prove useful one day. When, I don't know. Then we have three copies of Stepping Calyx Salvia, Grade 1 Boost, 5k Shield, 8k Base, Auto 1 placed on Rear Guard. If your Vanguard's a Grade 3 Grade, you may call a plant token to your Rear Guard. It's just a free call. I remember back in Set 5, this thing was my go-to for just making a board. Set 5 built playing Revolt, I don't know why, it was so much harder making a board, but with this deck it feels so much easier. And that doesn't make sense, because there are less cards in this deck that call plant tokens than in the other one. So, I don't understand how that works, but... Yeah, Salvia is just able to make a plant token just by being placed, and she does it for free, and all around that's really amazing. I have yet to use her in this deck, but or at least this version of it, but you know what? She did help a lot back in set 5, so like she gets to stay because she proved her worth. And also, no, I know on that occasion, we're like, you know, if worst case scenario, if I, have, if I really do need to make a board desperately, and I don't have other options, and I need to save my soul for Ridlina, Salvia will always be there to help. So that's why Salvia is here. In those one-off situations where I might need that extra soul, or, you know, I just want to abuse my opponent with plant tokens. Also because, she, again, she proved her worth in the set 5 version. So three copies of Kaliax. She She's just a good card, and she's proven that she deserves to be in this deck to me. Then we have four copies of Signpost Fairy, the card I forever miss play with because I don't understand its skill. Great on boost by Kishoda K base. He has the moon in the background. She, them, has the moon in the background. Auto wounds retire from your rear guard by your card's ability. If your vanguard's a glitter, choose one of your grade one less rear guards and I guess plus 10k until the end of turn. So I was fucking right. I, oh wait, no, no, I'm sorry, I, I, I had like an epiphany for a second, because I was like, wait, so I was right that first time when I said I can kill with Roro, but first off, I think Roro has to kill tokens, so that immediately went out the window, but also the fact that it's grade one or less, so that auto also automatically went out the window, but yeah, adds 10k, Um, you can guess who this is for, you know, Momoke, three other rear guards, is at 20 now, plus signpost, bringing it to 30, yeah, Um, it's there for that reason. It, 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 it adds numbers. There's nothing more to say about it. It's just a good card to have for that reason alone. Sadly, it has to be killed by effects, but, eh, you know, it's really easy to do because half the time on Momoke is going to be on your board one way or another. So, um, four of signpost fairy. Good grade one that adds numbers. Then we have four copies of RPG and Planner Prevent Dragon. Grade one boost, zero sources, K base. Every time I look at this, I see more of this art because now I'm starting to think it's like, uh, Lapras from Pokemon, because I, I see, like, the little fins here, so I'm starting to think it's not even a dragon, it's like a water thing. Anyways, continue to summon, you, you may have up to four sounds in the deck, and I'll just put on Guard Circle. Choose one of your units, it cannot be the battle, and if your hand is thrown more cards, discard from your hand, discard it. Standard PG, no special battle, basically that means if this is only one of the cards in your hand, when it's placed on Guard Circle, you don't have to discard, and that's great, because, you know, um, you can be as aggressive as you want in the early game, which, by the way, I very much encourage, this deck can make a board going second, or... Not even going second, just get to grade two turn and you can make a board. Like, every, let's just say this, every five games that I've actually paid attention to, the fourth game is always the game I don't make a full field on grade two turn. Just saying. So that means all those, other, so that means four of those other five games, I will always make a board on grade two turn. And most of the time, it's the exact same moves in the exact same order. So, yeah, and the one, and on rare cases that is not, I end up making a better board. So, yeah, um, you can definitely go aggressive out of nowhere, but then again, that also doesn't take hand cards. So I guess in the late game where you probably dropped a lot of your hand on guarding power, player event definitely comes in there to uh, save you because you definitely don't need to commit it on rear guard because, again, most of your board comes from plant tokens. So for a plan of prevent, just a good PG to have and have it as a four of. You can run Custodial Dragon because it has the same exact skill, but I had plan of prevent when this deck first came out, so might as well run it. Also, if you're wondering why I don't run the Blitz PG, I've been, if you've watched me long enough, you know what I'm about to say and you know why I say this. Not ha having the option between a unit and an order that do the exact same thing, 95% of the time I'm going to pick the unit. Here's why. The unit can boost. and Or maybe not boost, but the unit can swing. That's why. There have been many games where if I had played that order, while I don't know if it would have been the order in my hand or not, I may have lost if it was the order, or I would have lost if the order was the card I had in my hand. I don't take that chance. I'm running four PGs that are units, so if I can call them, I will call them. Four up. I remember there are multiple games I've won off that by Intimidation Factor. 
And then we have our last grade one, the grade one of the ride deck, which is Awakening from Summer Roa. I knew it. You'd have to have Bio Roa as your starter. So grade one boosts 5k power, 8k base, uh, 5k shield, aka base. Auto is replaced placed by riding from Bioward Youth Rora. Call up to one plant token to your back or center rear guard. Plant tokens are 5k power critical ones and have boost. And it has glitter searches to Viragalias. So all around, pretty nice. Um, you don't have to call plant token, but obviously you're going to because it's a free rear guard that has boost. What the fuck are you gonna do? Not call it. So yeah, 13k swing for the turn. All around, pretty nice. It goes great going second. Doesn't do amazing going first, but again, it's not bad. So might as well run this as your ride deck card, because fuck it. Also because it has synergy with the grade two. Then we have our grade twos. First up, we have three copies of Prod Pollen Refluvios, aka card I draw into my opening hand within every game because this is how I make my board. Grade two is a 5k shield, 9k base. Autumn is placed on mirror guard by carbosting when you call up to two plant token mirror guards. And this is how I make my board. Because I use the grade two row row to kill this unit's plant token to call two more, so that's two rear guards. And then I either call a Red Lina to call a Momoke, or I call this to call two more plant tokens, meaning I have a full board. Yep. It only takes two hand cards and you make a board. Not even joking. So, three of this thing. It is the carrier in the early game, and it has won me a few late game matches where I've kind of exhausted, or I really need the soul to go to Ridlina. So yeah, um, three Rafilios. It's just a good card to have for the plant token calling. Speaking of Ridlina, we have the main grade two of this deck. Three, four copies, sorry, of Drag Ridder Girl of Flame Blossoms Ridlina. Great turn of K Shield, 10k base. I don't know why I love Momoke more in this art than I like him in the other one. I assume this is Momoke. I might be wrong. Anyways, act rear guard. If you do not have a Momoke token on your rear guard, or in general, count blast one and call it to one Momoke token to your rear guard. Doesn't have to be the same column, but you know it has to be in the same column for uh, Momoke to go off. And then auto rear guard, Glitter Roro, if you have a Vanguard Glitter, if you have a Glitter Vanguard with Roro in his card name, well, this unit attacks into anything. By soul blasting one, choose one of your other tokens to say Calm as her. So it doesn't have to be a Momoke. It can be a plant token or any token for that matter but obviously it's going to be a Momoke for you. And this unit's power gets increased by that unit's power until the end of the battle. It includes increased values. So, you know, if that Momoke token has 30k base power uh, because of its skill and other things, then that means this will become 40k. Now, here's my thing. You never need to use the skill unless it's the turn you win. Well, maybe that might not be the case, but how I've experienced it is this. I, I hit people with Vanguard. They damage check a trigger. Momoke can hit, and so can Relina if I use the skill, except it's not worth it. So instead, I just do the single swing to Vanguard. And in the end, that's what saves me soul. That I don't use that skill until the very end of the game. because Or unless I have a bunch of Persona in hand. Because then I know I can save up that soul for board spamming and number adding when it really counts. Because pressure only matters if they're going to fucking guard it. That's true. You know it's true. So, yeah, um, don't, don't be fooled. That is a genuine statement. Like, it's really easy to fuck with people on that front. Like, if you just don't use the skill, they'll either drop a little bit extra, and that extra will kind of fuck them in the end. Or they'll take the damage, and that damage will fuck them in the end, because that's one less damage they can buffer with. So, yeah, um, for Verlina, you don't have to use her second skill, and that's the fun part, because her second skill can be used to fuck with people. So, four of then we have our last grade two in the grade two of the ride deck, and that is the world three thousand years later. Roroa, grade two in a five k shield, ten k base. Autumn when he's rode upon, when he's placed on Vanguard Circle, retire any one of your rear guards. So technically, you don't need to have this, but it's best because it gives you a free plant token to kill for this. And you call to two plant tokens to rear guard. Again, you ride this on your first turn, call the plant token to back row. Doesn't matter if you swing or not because it doesn't matter if you went second or first. Then you go to your next turn, ride this, kill that plant token, call two more. Doesn't matter where you call them to, and either call really to make another rear guard. That's a Momoke or just call this and make two more plant tokens that have a board. Yeah, th this deck easily makes a board. And like I said, four out of five games I'm doing this. And the only games that I don't do this is are my hand bricks. And by brick, I mean I draw three triggers. And then I draw another trigger. Yep, that, that that's just how it goes. So, uh, yeah, it's a nice ride deck, one up to have, so why not? And then move on to our grade threes. We have four copies of Unwavering Flame Sword, Red Lina, Grade 3, Turner Pizarro, 13k base. Must say I'm not a fan of the art here, except for, of course, again, Momoke, who looks cute in it. Auto rear at the beginning of your main phase. If you do not have a Momoke token on your rear guard, call to a Momoke token to rear guard. Okay. It's free, but it only works during the main phase. So, or specifically at the start of the main phase. So if she's not on board for it, and you don't have a copy of this, then you're kind of screwed. And that did happen to me once, because I got really unlucky, and I didn't draw a single copy of the Grade 2 somehow, or the card that searches it. So, yeah, um, sucks for me. So, yeah, that skill, 
This skill sucks if it's not prepared, but it doesn't really make a difference in most of the game. And then Glitter Row Row, if your Vanguard is a Glitter Row in its card name. Auto Hand, at the end of the battle, your rearguard is a lead in its card name attack. So it can be this one, or it can be this one, or any other Redlina they make. Um, if your opponent's Vanguard is a grade 3 or greater, by retiring a rearguard with a lead in its card name and a Momoke token, you call this card to rearguard and then increase that unit's power by the power of your Momoke token, retire for the cost of the ability for this. So essentially, let's say your Momoke token over here has 30k base. That means when you kill it, you can make this thing get plus 30k for a total of 43. So Momoke swung for 30. Let's just say you use Redlina's skill when you swung at Van. Redlina swung for 40. And then you use this thing's skill to make it also swing for 43. So, you know, dropping a lot of guardian power all around is really nice. It adds for a lot more of that multi-attack aspect, and I like it a lot. It's definitely a good card. It has literally no counter boss cost, no soul blast cost. It just is a straight-up free call. So, um... Four of like the only way this would be arguably better in my opinion is if a it called a plant token behind it and if and if or b it gained an act it gained a drive and by that i mean like it lost a drive but it can do a drive check from rear guard obviously that would like cost a counter blast or a soul blast but like you get the point but even then like this is still a good skill nonetheless like i'm just saying like those those are the only two ways i can think of it being better it's one of those two so yeah um for Fredlina, it's just a good card it's free call and plus number why not then we have our last unit in the deck, but not the last card. Three of in the main deck, one of in the right deck. Uh, for one's precious thing, Roroa. Great 3, 200 percent right, 13k base. I now realize he has a sword, but dude, I tell you what. This thing looks so fucking beautiful in Deer Days. Like, I'm, I'm gonna say this. Deer Days is not worth the $70. If it was 50 I would say it's worth it. But I'll tell you this much. Their animations for certain cards, on point. This one... Damn, like you should see those leaves. Hell, I'm tempted to do a let's play just to show off that and nothing else. I'm so I'm actually being serious. Um, but uh, yeah, so for one part, single row, pretty good. But then, anyways, active anger once per turn. The skill that this thing makes this deck so easy to play. Soul blast one, call up to three plant tokens to rear guard. If there's anything you walk away with today of knowing about this deck, is that skill. I, I'm not kidding you. This deck makes a board like there's no tomorrow. It's easy to use. It's just a free make of a board. And you get columns. And then auto van when this unit is attacked by anything, whether it's van or rear. Not once per turn, retire one or more of your token units. So it can be Mokes or plant tokens or any other token. And it gets plus 5k ton about a free unit retire for this cause. Okay, I never know how to use that skill properly. The AI from Deer Days does it a lot better than me, in my opinion. But um, yeah, again, I say this skill is still good. I just can't use it properly. And this skill is dumb because three plant tokens. For the cost of only a Soul Blast, or if you play this deck like I do, that is essentially free and doesn't have any backfire to it. Like, I'm, I'm not joking. This, it's like, playing Roroa feels like playing a deck full of Vanillas. I walk into the game and the game is already, like, set. I don't need to think. I just need to pay the cost and the deck does it for me. That's what Aurora feels like. It doesn't feel like strategy, unless like I'm just trying to fuck with people with Alina. So yeah, um, three of in the main deck, one of in the ride deck. What what can I say more? It's simple and it makes a board. Then we have our last card in the deck for real, and that's three copies of Resolute Pair of Eyes. I forgot what his name was, but it was like Twin Swords of Resolution or something like that. And I fucking love that name because, as I said before, dual swords are one of my favorite weapons in the top three. So, yeah. I mean, I still give it the points because both of them are wielding swords. And this stance is cool nonetheless, but still. Anyways, set order after Star Wars play. Put it to your order zone. Fuck yeah, we got a set order for my favorite deck or one of my favorite decks. Or my favorite still okay deck. And then play it by Crown Boss D1 and retiring a rear guard if you have Vanguard Row and its card name. Auto one's card is put into your order zone. Search your deck for up to one card with Red Lina's card name. Reveal it. Put it to your hand and shuffle your deck. Cool. You just get a Relina, and that's it. So it can be this one, or it can be this one. So that's cool. Technically, you're running a total of seven Relinas in this deck, or technically, you're running a total of 11. And then continuous order zone. During your turn, if you have a Vanguard row on its card name, all of your back row tokens get plus five, including the Momoke. So your plant tokens are now, just the column of plant tokens you might one day have, are swinging for a total of 15. The Momoke is probably swinging for 25 to 35, without boosting or triggers. That means Redlina is going to at least be swinging for 35 to 45 without triggers or Persona Ride. Yep. I love it when this deck does stupid things just for playing it. Also, that stacks. So if you have all three of them, that's plus 15 to the back row. Just saying. Um, three of Resolute Pair of Eyes. It is so fun getting this out on the board and seeing what shenanigans can be done with it. Good card.
That's it for the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. I also, if you're wondering why I don't run the regalia piece, I just don't like it. it you know, it makes the deck feel too easy to play. Like, I mean, it already feels too easy to play. I don't want to like another cheap way to play like plus 10k. Plus, if anything, I'll swap it out for an actual soul charger. But yeah, that's it for the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know a lot of people are probably going to question like, why don't I run Intlet? If you know me, you know why I don't run Intlet. I'm not going to explain it. I've explained this in almost every other deck profile. I don't feel like explaining this for like the 90th time. That isn't even a, that isn't even a joke. That is actually being serious. I think I would have explained it about 90 times at this point. But um, yeah, like it, it's good. It does what it does best. It gets a board. It gets numbers. It gets four attacks, which is all around, and possibly five if you let it get it five attacks really well. It can do mind fuckery with Redlina. And the best part about it is if you play this deck the way I do, Soul is not an issue. Only CB is. And even then, not that bad. I, I, I'm not joking. If you see me play this, you know that Soul is never the fucking issue. It's just CB. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join the Discord, follow Twitch, and I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to stand up. your vanguards.